Good morning, my ketovore, carnivore, keto family. I like to call it the keto sphere because all of that fits into it and many other variations of it. Uh, I think most of you know by now that I started off as a very strict keto following Dr. Westman, keeping my carbs below 20. And within just a couple weeks, I was keeping them below 10. And then a few more weeks later, I was keeping them five and less. And I did that for two years. And then uh, this coming January will be three years that I've been full-fledged carnivore for the most part. When uh, Ruthie died, that really, really hit me hard. But uh, I managed to stay the course, you know, through her last, last uh, weeks, actually last year. It was very hard and uh, stayed the course for the first year after she died and uh, didn't have any problems staying the course at uh, the type of depression I sunk into last year about the time uh, our one year anniversary of her dying came up it was totally different depression than I'd ever felt I was happy inside and I was depressed as hell too and little by little I let myself creep into oh it won't hurt to have a cookie and the next time I offered a cookie, it was two or three. And then I started going out with some buddies on the Tuesday afternoons, about four to the Mexican restaurant that I lived behind. And at first I just sat there and drank coffee and stuff with them. But then one day I made a mistake and uh, picked up a chip. I know you know where this is going. I just went downhill from there. I never did just totally give in, but I got to where every week we'd go to the Mexican restaurant. I'd sit there eat uh, chips with uh, not their normal uh, queso, but with the uh, white cheese, whatever you call that. And uh, little by little by little, I allowed myself to do other things like the Senior Citizen Center. We had a monthly luncheon for the community, and uh, I, I helped run that organization here in uh, the giant town that I live in. And uh, so, uh, if somebody made a German chocolate cake one day, and that's, that's always been my ultimate weakness. My mom used to make them, and they were just awesome. Anyway, I, I reason, oh, just one small piece won't hurt. Well, then that got to where every month I was having a piece of cake or a little of this or a little of that and everything. But anyway, yeah, the story to it is in the last little over a year now, I gained about 20 pounds. I was so proud of how much I'd lost and how long I'd kept it off. And I've just been disgusted with myself. Well, uh, I made a post uh, a couple months back about how I was trying to get back on track. Well, yesterday I finally did. I'm going to go back to the way I did keto for quite a while, but it's going to stay carnivore. But going back to eating one meal a day, and that'll be breakfast. Made it all day yesterday. Never hungry never took another bite and went to the Mexican restaurant for a little bit with friends and sat there and drank water and I'll keep doing that from now on I need rid of the other 20 pounds I've gained and, uh, it just makes me sick I promised myself I wouldn't do that a second time around <laughs> but anyway uh, I, I'm hoping to make myself a little studio at home and maybe do do uh, some more videos about my adventures in uh, the keto sphere and maybe be able to have guests and stuff on. I'm not looking to make any money off of it. I'm not going to be advertising for anybody. I don't use any products outside of meat, dairy, uh, things of that nature. Uh, I, I do use uh, real real salt, but I wouldn't advertise for it. I'm not, like I said, I'm not looking for, to make money off of this venture. Never have, never will. But I like to encourage people, and I'd give anything if uh, had a carnivore keto group here in the area that I'm in. And I, I had a little keto group when I first got into it, and it went real good, and then COVID hit. And I lost touch with everybody. There was only about six of us met at the uh, public library, and I always took Ruthie with me. She liked to she uh, really couldn't comprehend or understand what we were talking about so she wandered the library and met people there and had a good time and uh, i could see most of the library from where the conference room we used and i could keep an eye on her without any problem and plus there was a girl worked there that ruthie had known since she was a baby and ruthie even babysat for her 
years ago when she was a toddler. So that made it nice. And Ruthie loved the library. <laughs> I miss that girl so much. I had no idea how much I was going to miss her. Anyway, life goes on. I, I love all you guys. And I love the support that different ones of you give me. And the encouragement to go on. Sorry, I, there was a time I could be just as emotional as Mr. Spock. But then after the, the events of uh, February of 97, I have not been one since then to be able to really just hide my emotions like I used to. They will come out at the most inopportune times. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'd like to be able to tell more of my story and hopefully in an entertaining way. I guess I'm going to say I'm at McDonald's where I start my day off after I get up about 4 o'clock every morning. And I tell you what, it caught me off guard last night. I knew this was going to happen because when I first went to uh, full-fledged uh, carnivore, the first time I had one meal a day with just meat, eggs, a little bit of cheese, I woke up so much. Even coffee didn't put me to sleep. And believe me, coffee is a downer to me. If I have a sleepless night, I usually can get up and make a pot of coffee, drink it, and go back to sleep like that. Or late in the evening, a little restless and stuff, make coffee, sit there, drink a pot of it, watch something boring on TV, and go out like a light and sleep till 4 o'clock in the morning. But last night, just like this, when I first started uh, carnivore, I was wide awake. I slept maybe two hours all night. That, that will pass. It took about a week and a half last time. So I figure maybe maybe it won't take quite so long this time. You know, I know what to expect from it. But the mental clarity last night was just intense. Uh, I didn't realize how what little bit I was eating out of my norm was affecting my mental clar clarity. And hopefully maybe that's affecting this uh, deep depression that still clings. It's, it's so weird to be depressed and to be basically happy too at the same time. Most of my life I spent depressed hiding behind a smile and going on my way to make other people smile and laugh. That's always been my character. I had a dad that I felt hated me. He couldn't stand that I laughed and cut up. And I'm sure he's the source of my depression that I've never been able to kick. But anyhow, life does go on and I have learned to pretty much just forget him. And uh, he, was a, he was a great man. He just, he thought his boys were military recruits, being he was a military career guy. And he lived by the theory that uh, boys are born evil and you've got to stomp it out of them and make them into what you want. Don't work. It ruins people. It hurts people. Anyway, look forward to talking to you guys more. And I love uh, all you guys that put up videos and uh, information. Uh, Kelly, uh, can't think of her name right now. I'm bad with names. I'm bad with my own name. I forgot it before. <laughs> Kelly Hogan. There we go. Dr. Westman, uh, Jason Fung, uh, Dr. Uh, Barry. They're some of my favorites that I like to watch. And there's a couple other girls that I like. And Dr. Sean is a more recent one that I've been watching. And uh, the doc Dr. Caffey. I mean, I do have heart troubles. I had a heart attack in 2016. I wish I'd started this before then, maybe I would have avoided that, but I have it, it is what it is. My ejection fraction though improved. After Ruthie died, it dropped down to uh, 19%, and now it's back up around 41, so that's a big good thing. And this last echocardiogram I had, they said the walls of my heart, they had been getting harder and thickening, but uh, some of that seems to reverse now. The doctor said that the thickening of the heart seemed to be reversing itself and he didn't understand how that was possible. I haven't discussed uh, my carnivore life with my heart doctor. I've discussed it with my MD. Whether she's sharing any of that with him or not, I don't know. But he's never said anything about it. He does fuss at me because my LDL is high. <laughs> but I know and understand that, that process nowadays. Maybe not fully, but I enjoy listening to Dr. Caffey speak on the subject of heart and stay off of my operating room table. I hope I can stay off of one for the rest of my life. 
Well, that brings up another topic. Uh, I started keto in uh, late 2018. And in uh, February, I think it was February of uh, 2019, my appendix went. And of course, the first thing everybody asks is, is that keto you're doing, that's what caused your appendix to go? You know, and so before I, anybody even said that to me, I asked my uh, doctor that did the surgery and everything, uh, what caused uh, the appendix to go out. And I told him what my lifestyle was a very strict keto and I had very limited carbohydrates and all. And I said, I know people are gonna be trying to blame my, my kid, uh, not kidney uh, appendix, I'm sorry going out on my uh, keto lifestyle. They said, no, this is something started years ago. It's just finally caught up with you. He said, it's a combination of poor diet and exercise and, you know, different things of that nature. And he said, you can, uh, he, he actually said he believed in keto himself. And he said, that's not the cause. But anyway, uh, okay, I'm gonna shut up for now. And I'll try to get back with you again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.